there. Uh, letting, him, letting the euro disappear would be a major catastrophe, and I think you did your part. No one can accuse you of indecis indecisiveness, and compliments for that. Now, that doesn't mean that we agree with you on everything, and uh, you imagine that. So basically, you drowned the crisis under a tsunami of liquidity, and of course, you use the standard method. You, you drown uh, basically the financial system under a tsunami of liquidity, and you count on the financial system uh, to allocate that efficiently. And while we do not share your belief that the financial system do, does that, I'm not saying that it cannot do this, but it does not. If I look at the status of inequality and more importantly, of our ecological footprint and the climate crisis, no one can say that the financial sector has been seen as an efficient allocator of finance. Uh, after the financial crisis, you might have thought that they had learned a lesson. Absolutely not. So other methods could have been envisaged, and one of them is helicopter money. I know that you answered to uh, Jonas Fernandez earlier that, well, you had to see whether this was actually fiscal policy or not, and you have concluded apparently that it is. So if you have any, uh, any uh, studies confirming that, I would like to see them. Because actually when I look at the kind of policies that you've been uh, uh, performing, you might call this helicopter money for the rich. And I know that you dispute the fact that quantitative easing is driving up inequality, saying, well, the counterfactual is that if we don't do this, we will get into a worse economic situation and that will drive up inequality. But it's as if the alternative is between doing nothing and doing quantitative easing, while the alternative would be to perform quantitative easing in various ways. And this is where we should compare the effect on inequality. And so I'd like to have your thoughts about that. Uh, one aspect is indeed inequality and the other is uh, driving up investment to face climate change and our ecological footprint. There, you have said, well, it's not for me to decide, but the fact is that you have seen those liquidities going places where they are actually uh, not just a distraction, but detrimental to fighting uh, climate change. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now, about inequality, as you uh, rightly recalled, uh, we've discussed this several times, and uh, there is pretty good evidence that uh, QE has actually improved on that front uh, because reduced unemployment, which is the major source of inequality. It's quite clear that when assets prices go up, the, the ones who owns the assets are usually wealthy, and therefore the, immediately this distribution effect, there is a distribution effect. But at the same time, also house prices have gone up. But all in all, when uh, the dust settles and you see unemployment, you see 11 million jobs created, then that means lower inequality because, as I said, unemployment is the largest source of inequality. Now, in a sense, uh, when you do monetary policy, and this holds for Eurozone, but for every central bank in the world, you do monetary policy through injecting liquidity through the channels that exist at that point in time. Uh, in Europe, you have a dominance of banks. So it's a bank-based economy, and our monetary policy acts through the lending transmission channel of the banking system. In the United States, it acts more through the markets, financial markets, but basically that's what you have now. Is this, as you said, is this the best way to allocate liquidity if you have in mind objectives like climate change or reducing inequality in a more forceful, more effective way? Well, probably not. Probably there are different ways to do it. And in fact, some of the new ideas about monetary policy, like the MMT, like a recent uh, paper presented by various authors, amongst which Professor Fisher and others, would suggest different ways of channeling money to the economy. Now, these are objectively pretty new ideas. They have, been, they have not been discussed by the Governing Council, and, and they, so we should look at them, but they have not been tested as well. And when you look at them closely, you realize that the task of distributing money to one subject or the other subject, that's typically a fiscal task. 
it's a government's decision. It's not the central bank. And you wouldn't certainly want to have the central bank deciding who should receive the money. So the, the, there are several uh, issues that need to be uh, explored with these new ideas. But one key issue is the political governance of these ideas that needs to be addressed.